Uh, I got some training that is put out by the Homeland Security, federal training. And I have copies of this, if anybody want copies of it, it's pretty good stuff. And there's three types of jurisdiction in the federal government, exclusive, concurrent, proprietary. You need to understand that everything in Utah, except for military bases, post offices, things like that, you'll find in your constitution, is proprietary jurisdiction, even our national parks. And, the, and to their definition of pri proprietary jurisdiction, it is simply this. When an ownership of a piece of government land is considered proprietary, the government has had has said to have taken over none of the state's obligation for law enforcement. That's a pretty big statement. It's pretty e even I can understand that. Another thing that, that in this that I've always wondered, we had a U.S. attorney get up for the Utah Sheriff's Association a few years back, and he told us Article 4, Section 3, that the Congress has given the authority to the federal government to enact any rules and regulations that they seem necessary. Okay. He said, this is the big kahuna, this is it, guys. This is why we can do basically anything we want. Well, according to their own training, it, it, it talks about that, and it says, yes, they have authority to make rules and regulations to protect the natural resources. And it goes on to give examples about issuing wood permits or a hiking permit. Nothing ever is said about law enforcement. That's what they have authority to do, period. And like I say, I have a... A copy of this, anybody wants it. One other thing I want to talk about this is we passed a law last year, two years ago, where it makes it illegal for uh, the federal guys to assimilate state law. That's when they make a rule that they attach a, a, a federal administrative rule to a Utah code and, and enforce that law. According to their own rules and regulation, it's illegal for them to, to assimilate state law in proprietary jurisdiction. Concurrent and exclusive, yes, but not proprietary. So. Keep that in mind when I tell you this next story. Here just a few months back, we had a situation where we have a BLM agent that uh, was not in the area. Uh, we don't have anybody that lives there now, so he just kind of floats around. And he, he had an uh, ex-employee contact them about some illegal activity down on the monument. That there were some individuals that they had an open case on since 2011. I can't imagine why it would take that long to investigate this case, but these people were stealing Moki marbles, which is a, a sandstone formation, and, and Mike knows what they are. They're a little round, and they can be various size. And this uh, ex-employee seen these individuals down in the desert gathering up these Moki marbles. So not having anybody around, and I remember, I got three deputies sitting right there, three deputies. They call it Glen Canyon National Recreation, law enforcement officer to go down and see what's going on. He walks into this situation. These guys have got 1,100 pounds of Moki models. They have a pipe full of methamphetamines. They have a box of stolen jewelry. And when he left, he was told, do not make an arrest. Don't make an arrest. Just go see what's going on. So doing what he was told to do, and he told me later, he told him several times I was uncomfortable with what they was asking me to do. When he gets down there and finds 1,100 pounds of methamphetamines, and he finds the, or the 100 pounds of Moki marbles, the methamphetamine pipe with full of methamphetamines, the stone jewelry. He takes the Moki marbles and the jewelry and, and the pipe and cut them loose. Turn these guys loose. I got three deputies sitting there. Now, this is what he turned loose. I can't show you the names of the stuff. This is one of the guys right here. This is a rap sheet. There's 25 pages of it. This man is on probation. He's a criminal. There's assaults. There's frauds, there's theft, there's methamphetamines, thefts, aggravated assaults. And he's on probation. And they don't know where he is at today. Here's another, the other guy, six pages of criminal history. They're somewhere, and guess what they're doing? They're making more victims. They're the guys that are stripping our, our crushers with of copper, steel, and diesel, and because that's what they are, they're criminals. And they turned them loose. There's federal law that... that we could have arrested them on, on the methamphetamines and, and they could have sat in our jail and not been out victimizing other people while they got their, their federal indictments. And we would have more than been happy to, to work with these guys. And, and in closing, we do that all the time. I have a lot of good federal partners. I have park rangers and forest service law, law enforcement officers that I trust that are deputized. And we work very closely with them. There's not one BLM officer that's deputized the state of Utah, and there's a reason for that. We work very closely with the DEA. 
And for the life of me, I do not understand why we that, that, that BLM thinks that we need a BLM officer in every under every stage bush in the state of Utah. There's not there's there's not that much for them to do. We have two DEA agents in southern Utah. Let me tell you what we've accomplished with them. There is there's other agents up here, but if we have a large amount of dope, we contact these guys and they work with us. Here starting in 2007, we was inundated in southern Utah, especially with large marijuana gardens. These marijuana gardens were proven to be put together by the Mexican cartel. And after about four years, it's been 2010 since we've had a marijuana garden in southern Utah, 2011. We made it inefficient and, and they couldn't afford to plant dope in Utah. We beat back the Mexican Mafia by working with two DEA agents and the common denominator was each respected sheriff of his county was, the, was where everything went through. We organized it, we worked with the DEA and the state and these other agencies. We just didn't have the DEA or, the, or anybody else going out and doing it by themselves. They worked through the sheriffs. And by doing it that way, we beat back the Mexican Mafia.